Our sleep training skills usually fail when kid is sick, or now that he is getting his molars, it seems to be a more painful progress more than other teeth. When trying to get back on track, usually cry it out results in baby throwing up within the first few minutes and mom feeling really guilty for letting him reach that level of distress. Feel like I'm at a loss here. Any tips? Thanks. So teething can be really hard and it often is a time where parents kind of like do whatever they need to do to get the kid to go to sleep, especially when it's just really hard. So two things in particular that help with teething. Number one is recognizing that it's okay if we revert to some old habits when they're sick or when they're teething or when you're traveling or anything along those lines because it doesn't throw them off in the long term to allow them a little leeway when things are not the normal routine. When it's every normal day, you do the normal things, but when you're traveling, when you're getting a tooth, when you have an ear infection or something like that, it's okay to re resort to previous things that worked or doing what it takes to get some good rest for parents and kids. There's no need to be like so stoic or so um, guilt-ridden or punitive or whatever you're feeling because of, you know, either letting them cry it out when clearly they're in pain, clearly they're sick, blah, 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 blah. You can just feed them if you need to. You can just cuddle them if you need to. You can just snuggle them to sleep, whatever it takes to get them to sleep in those moments. In general, what works best is ibuprofen or Tylenol before bed because throughout the night they have pain. And I often, I talk about in my Mighty Sleepers course about like the typical way to tell, is it a cold? Is it f hunger? Is it a tooth that's coming in? Is it an ear infection? Is it a growth spurt? We talk about all of that and kind of all the different regressions within Mighty Sleepers. But I'll tell you that teething, typically the pain is mid early to mid night pain. So we're talking like 12, one o'clock, something along those lines where they have that pain and they're waking up. They're often also more fussy during the daytime. They're sticking everything in their mouth. They don't want to eat like normal. Those are all signs that they could be getting a tooth, in which case ibuprofen lasts longest and works best in my experience and my patient's experience. Tylenol is fine too. I don't mess around with Orgel or other teething things like that. Like those teething biscuits, which I think are like, there's, there's teething biscuits and then there's like teething chewy things that you freeze those are f really fine in the short term i don't like Oragel one because like it washes off the teeth the mouth really quickly and two parents put too much on and it doesn't last for very long there is some rare um disease that you can get from it that um, is really rare it's on the box it's called met hemoglobinemia and it's really not likely to happen but another good reason not to use something that i don't frankly think you need and i've never seen patients need also i will tell you you do not need amber necklaces amber necklaces make no scientific sense they put the child at risk for strangulation or burns to the neck i've seen that happen where the parents think they're doing the right thing by getting the amber necklace and then the baby gets their hand underneath it and tugs really hard and just like gives themselves this little really nasty abrasion or even strangulation or other things like that or it falls apart and they eat the beads and there's just no scientific basis. I mean, we know in Jurassic Park that amber is good for collecting dino DNA, but otherwise it's great for decorating, terrible for helping with teething. It just is magical and doesn't do anything. What did I answer this question? I feel like I kind of went off the rails here. Um, what you might try in this instance where you're finding that cried out results in baby throwing up, like nobody wants that. And that's just, you know, not pleasant for anybody. I mean, he's still going to smile and be happy when you go in and see him in the morning and he won't hold it against you that he threw up last night. Um, but it's just a hot mess. And so what I would do is camping. Camping is a technique that I talk about in Mighty Sleepers, and I've talked about it on other videos too, where you camp in the baby's room. It doesn't mean you're holding them. It means you're nearby, in within eye shot of baby. He can see you. He can be comforted by your presence, your quiet presence, like reading a book. Like I do this with our kids sometimes, and I'll just take my Kindle in there, and I'll be like, yep, yep, okay, read your book, be quiet, rest, 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 and I'll just be reading my Kindle. And that works really well. 
although I will tell you that Dorothy knows my password to unlock my Kindle and she buys books. So about every week I have to go into Amazon and unbuy all these digital books that she has somehow figured out how to buy on her own. I need to change the password. I just haven't done that. And that's a good reminder to me to change my Kindle password so she can't buy all these books because then it's just a hassle to go in and try and get credits back on digital purchases, blah, blah, blah. Um, you camp in the room, you stay there until he falls asleep, and then the next night you can move a little bit closer to the door, and you just reinforce that over and over again. Hey, you can fall asleep on your own. Look, I'm getting closer to the door. Look, I'm in the hallway. Look, I'm down the hall. You fell asleep on your own, buddy, and you can talk them through that. It's normal, and it works really well and really quickly, and it can get them back on track, and it teaches them very gently you can fall asleep on your own. That would be my advice. It's no fun, though. Thank you.